Hi, kindergartners. Today, for our social justice unit, we are going to be reading two books. The first book that we're going to be reading is called Young Water Protectors, a story about Standing Rock. And this book, Young Water Protectors, is a book that is so special because it is written by a 10-year-old boy and his mom, who are part of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. They write about big ideas like unfairness and power and injustice. I want you to keep your ears and eyes open for examples of unfairness and power. All right, my friends, this book is really special to me because it's written by a child. So I want you to think about how important it is that kids are able to do things like write books to make a difference. Young Water Protectors, a story about Standing Rock, written by Aslan Tudor and co-written by his mom, Kelly Tudor. And this is a true story, a learn about the world book. A water protector is someone who protects water from getting polluted. Companies are polluting the water by building things like oil pipelines under or near waterways. It says Cannonball River, North Dakota. Here's a picture of the river. Native, as Native Americans, we want to protect the earth and water from getting polluted and harmed because these are sacred lands and waters to us. We want to keep our homelands from getting harmed. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe is a Native American, a na sorry, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe is a Native nation of Dakota and Lakota peoples. Their reservation is located in North and South Dakota. Their lands used to be much bigger because of the Treaty of Fort Laramie, an agreement made a long time ago. People a long time ago did not respect that and took the land without permission so that the reservation became much smaller. The land is called the Unceded Treaty Territory because the Lakota people did not give up the land. So this was their whole, um, the whole area of their land before, whole territory, but then parts of it were taken and only the red parts are parts that are still part of their tribe lands. And the rest of it was taken from them. They did not give it up. A company was trying to build an oil pipeline under the Missouri River which is Standing Rock's drinking water supply. The pipeline is called the Dakota Access Pipeline. The land and water where the pipeline was being built is their treaty land. When pipelines are built, they end up leaking and polluting the land and water. If the Dakota Access Pipeline were to leak, it would make the water for the Standing Rock, Standing Rock Sioux Tribe undrinkable. In Lakota, Niwakoni means water is life. And this sign here, someone wrote, made a sign just like how you made posters last week to persuade people. This one says, children don't drink oil. So they're saying, please do not put the oil pipeline near the water. So we do not want it leaking into the water. Youth from Standing Rock started a water protector's camp to protect their water. It was called Sacred Stone Camp. They asked people to come and join them to help protect their water. A lot of people came to help and a new camp started. It was called Oseti Sakowin Camp. And here you can see all the people. I went to North Dakota to the Oseti Sakowin camp in August 2016. I was eight years old. I went with my mom, my little sister, and some friends. 
So here's Aslan, the author, and his little sister at the camp. Every day we went to the gates where they were building the pipeline. The morning started with traditional Lakota prayers. Each day we were trying to stop them from building the pipeline. The kids there helped protest and also played together. We sang traditional songs with everyone. People painted messages of resistance and posted flags from their native nations. So you can see some of their native flags. And here again is um, messages of resistance or like, like how we made posters. People trying to stop what's happening by using their words and reading messages. Every day, warriors on horses rode through camp and led everyone on a march up to the pipeline construction site. They painted their horses and faces with traditional designs. One of them told me I have a warrior hair because I keep it long. In camp, we slept in a tent. Others slept in teepees, buses, and RVs. We ate food together, and at night we had big fires and met Native Americans from all over. People sang round dance songs at night. Camp started small, and there were only other Native Americans there. Then camp grew rapidly. After we left, camp grew to around 10,000 people, and it became one of the largest cities in North Dakota. They built a traditional Lakota school, several kitchens, a general store, a medical compound, and many other things. We came back in October 2016. Camp was huge when we got there. There were around 5,000 people there. There were a lot of teepees and tents. It was much bigger than in August. There were Native people and non-Native people there this time. I went to the traditional Lakota school that was in camp. It was called the Defenders of the Water School. I learned about a type of corn made by the Pueblo peoples. We sang Lakota songs. They had a library in the school. I read books by Native authors. My mom worked in the medical tent in camp. She is an EMT. We got to stay in a teepee with a friend. It was warm inside because there was a fire. It was pretty cold outside, so it felt nice to sleep in the teepee. The pipeline was still being built. People from camp went to different construction sites each day. It wasn't too safe for kids out there, so we stayed in camp. You can see here's, here are the teepees, and one of those teepees is the one that Aslan was staying in. Between August 2016 and February 2017, tens of thousands of people passed through this camp. People came from every continent of the world, including celebrities, politicians, and tribal representatives from over 500 Native nations. It was the largest gathering, Native gathering in history and the largest unity between different Native nations we have ever had. The pipeline was delayed, but finished in the summer of 2017. The Standing Rock Sioux Tribe is still fighting it in court. Mini Wakoni, water is life. The end, and here it says about the author. Thank you to the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe for the camp and the resistance to the pipeline. Thank you to my mom for helping me write this book. Thank you to everyone who helps fight pipelines and for Native rights. Aslan Tudor is 10 years old. He is a citizen of the Lipan Apache Tribe of Texas. He and his family live in Indianapolis, Indiana, and are moving home to Texas soon. Aslan has traditional hair, which for boys is long. He is a grass dancer and drummer. 
he wants to be an actor to help represent Native people well in film. He acts in local stage plays currently. And here's a picture of the author. All right, my friends. So I want you to think, a 10-year-old Aslan wrote this book. What does that make you think about? Kids from Standing Rock um, started water protectors camps. What did people do at those camps? Why did they do those things? So they made these camps because they're trying to protect the water. They do not want the pipelines, the oil to be built by the water or in the land because they do not want it to leak and make the water or land dirty because they want to have clean water. Um, and I want you to think, what can kids do to try and help make the change? And lastly, I want you to think, where are you on our compass? Are you thinking something or feeling something? Next, this was a Learn About the World book. We're going to read another book called We Are Water Protectors. And this is another book also about the importance of protecting water, but this one is written in more of a storybook style. So I want you to think about that. We are water protectors. This book is written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad. We are water protectors. Let's see if I can turn that. Let me put this up just a little. That's good. Water is the first medicine, Nokomis told me. We come from water. It nourished us inside our mother's body as it nourishes us here on Mother Earth. Water is sacred, she said. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. The river's rhythm runs through my veins, runs through my people's veins. My people talk of a black snake that will destroy the land. Here it is. And this black snake is a pipeline. Spoil the water, poison plants and animals, and wreck everything in its path. When my people first spoke of the black snake, they foretold that it wouldn't come for many, many years. Now the black snake is here. Its venom burns the land, courses through the water, making it unfit to drink. So they're saying when the oil pipeline is going through the water, it is not safe to drink the water. Take courage. I must keep the black snake away from my village's water. I must rally my people together to stand for the water, to stand for the land, to stand as one against the black snake. We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. It will not be easy. We fight for those who cannot fight for our, themselves. The winged ones, the crawling ones, they're saying they're fighting to help everyone, nature, all the animals and plants. The four-legged, the two-legged, the plants, trees, rivers, lakes. The earth, we are all related. Tears like waterfalls stream down, tracks down my face, tracks down my people's faces. Water has its own spirit, Nokomis told me. Water is alive. Water remembers our ancestors who came before us, she said. 
We stand with our songs and our drums. We are still here. We are stewards of the earth. Our spirits have not been broken. We are water protectors. We stand. The black snake is in for the fight of its life. Here are some signs they're making to protest. It says, water is life. Remember, mini wakomi. And that, remember, means water is life. No Dakota access pipelines. All nations, protect the sacred. Stand with Standing Rock. The end. All right, my friends. So I want you to think about why do you think that it's so important for these the Native American people to protect the water from the pipelines? Why do you think that they want, they do not want the pipelines? What do you think kids can do to try and help make a change? What did Aslan do to try and make a change? And where are you feeling on the compass? Are you thinking something? Are you feeling something? I want you to share your answers with us in Flipgrid. All right. Thank you, friends. Bye.